Hello everyone and welcome back to my F1 2021 Formula 2 custom season. The race is about to begin here in China and what a race it should be. This circuit is always amazing to watch and today shouldn't be any different. I cannot wait for us to get started here. On what was originally marshland, the stunning state-of-the-art circuit that you see before you was built in 2003 at a cost of around $450 million. The circuit is very popular for both fans and drivers of the sport, offering complex low-speed turns, very fast g-force inducing curves and high-speed straights, which always provide thrilling, unforgettable race day experiences for everyone. Let's look at the grid order for today's race while the cars make their final preparations. Yuki Tsunoda lines up on pole position, with Mick Schumacher alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Galeo, Sato, Felipe Dragovic, and Aitkin, Schwartzman, Tictum, PK, Christian Lungard, Eilot, Deruvela, Luca Giotto, and Matsushita, Armstrong, Nisani, Markalov, and Guillaume Samaya, Alessi, Joe, Delatraz, and Nikita Mazepin starts from the back of the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. So here we are on the grid then for the race in China. The feature race of the weekend. We're starting on the medium compound, finishing the race on the softs as we now get ready to go for the five red lights. And it's lights out and away we go from third on the grid. And it's a good start. Uh, for us, a better one though for Mick Schumacher who's challenging for the lead down into the first corner. We're going to try and hold on to third, but we've already lost that and maybe losing another position as we need to try and hold it around the outside. Marino Sato with a good start and taking a third position. We try and get back up the inside into the left-hander. We can't quite get there and Marino Sato holds on. Thankfully, we hold on uh, to fourth as we run a little bit wide and uh, we get back on track. And now we need to refocus and try and chase down Marino Sato in the early stages of this one. Uh, because losing a position is not ideal as we already had a bumpy start in the first round uh, of this championship. Tried to have a look to the outside of Sato, but no uh, opportunity to make a move there as we continue to put the pressure on the uh, Trident driver. Still uh, not able to do anything about uh, him through this middle sector. Very difficult to overtake in this section, so we just need to sit behind and uh, wait uh, potentially for the hairpin. Uh, that will be our best opportunity in this uh, early phases, so we have a bit of a slide there on exit the side, still a little on the cold side uh, at this stage of the race, so uh, we need to be a little bit patient as well on the throttle, and uh, yeah, be very, very careful uh, about how we apply the accelerator through this long right-hander as we head onto the straight, so staying wide, stay out of the dirty air of Marino Sato, and that's worked for us, we've got a good exit onto the straight, and now we'll be able to breeze past uh, in a straight line. We go to the inside as we run side by side with the Japanese driver down towards the hairpin and we're going to be able to perform an outbreaking maneuver here and find our way up into third position. Mick Schumacher has taken the lead uh, from Yuki Tsunoda uh, in the opening phases as well so uh, the German driver now leads uh, the race in China and uh, we run wide there that's going to give an opportunity to Sato and he's back through and now we've got all that work to do once again so uh, big mistake there from us uh, just getting up on the curb there uh, at the final corner. We can't quite get back up the inside into this uh, second uh, kind of snail section where we weave left and right uh, through the corners and now uh, trying to set up a good exit here. Going for a different approach this time, trying to straighten up the exit but we carry way too much speed, run wide and uh, that opportunity uh, to, make an to make an overtake uh, along this straight is now gone. We continue on and uh, now trying to carry the speed through the first corner around the outside making a bit of contact with the back of Sato as he's a little bit slower than I expected there as we try and sneak up the inside but that gap was never going to be there so we sit behind him for a little bit longer running wide though through the next left hand as we had to try and catch the car and then Tickton gets through our teammate has taken that position from us and he's up in the fourth we're down to fifth position so uh, yeah we need to stop making mistakes because it's costing us positions here uh, at this point and there's another one as we run a little bit wide but thankfully uh, we don't lose anything uh, on that occasion looking at the front wing I thought I might have got a bit of damage now we're off the road again getting distracted there and now we are going to lose more positions as we get overtaken by Felipe Dragovic we try and get back around the outside of the Brazilian sliding at the rear end though and trying to catch the car lose control smash into the bollard and we're heading for the wall but thankfully we just about stop in time and uh, we'll be able to continue on but 
yeah, we just tried to get around the outside of Felipe Drogovic and uh, just lost the back end, trying to carry too much speed there. And uh, now we need to get back onto the circuit and uh, try and get going uh, once again as we uh, rejoin uh, the circuit and uh, still losing places as we go side by side uh, with Nikita Mazepin in the high tech near the back of the field here. And uh, now uh, down the inside goes Guan Yu Zhou, the Chinese driver at his home event. Uh, unfortunately not having a great run uh, and it's, uh, it's currently sitting uh, well second to last other than myself as we uh, run a bit wide there through uh, this long right hand onto the back straight and now we can try and uh, regain the position on Guan Yuzhou if we can get close enough we won't be uh, certainly close enough this time and uh, yeah that's just a, a disaster for us as we uh, tumble down the order and uh, now we've got all the work to do uh, throughout the rest of this race. Another big loss of the back end, just pushing way, way too hard at this stage of the race. So we need to calm things down and uh, get uh, get our act together and uh, maybe we'll be able to make some progress as we uh, recompose ourselves. And uh, we're once again at the putting pressure uh, on Guan Yu Zhou. So let's see if we can get a good run through this final corner. And now we've got the DRS, the slipstream, very close behind the Chinese driver as we head down towards the first corner. The fastest lap of the race now as we go down the inside into the first corner. Very uh, deep on the brakes there. It's not a heavy braking zone, so it's very difficult to get up the inside. But we made it work and got ahead of Guan Yu Zhou, who was uh, very cooperative there in uh, giving us some space when uh, we were nowhere near the apex of the corner. And Guan Yu Zhou... Uh, releases us into 21st position uh, at this stage of the race. 20 cars to go and we'll be in the lead. Uh, not going to happen. But let's see what we can do and see what we can recover uh, in this one. Uh, our next target is Nikita Mazepin. This should be a much easier overtake as we catch him along the back straight and he defends all the way to the inside. We'll go to the outside later on the brakes uh, than the Russian and uh, we will get around the outside of him and find our way up into the top 20. Okay, good work. Great pass. Making some progress as uh, we now close into the back of Louis Delatraz and uh, we'll see what we can do uh, about the Swiss driver in uh, the coming laps as we uh, continue on. Uh, you can see uh, we're reasonably close uh, through this first section again, trying to get up the inside. Another half spin there as we try and get up the inside of Della tries that gap uh, just like we tried with Sato was never going to be there and uh, we're lucky to get away with that and another loss of the back end there so we're really uh, pushing the limits here as uh, we uh, again experience a few audio issues uh, in the recording I don't know what's causing it but uh, it's just going to be something we need to continue to deal with. Anyway, we continue on down the inside of Louis Delatraz, and we might get Giuliano Alessi here as well. We're very tight on the apex, though, and Alessi is going to have a more flowing run around the outside, and he maintains the position. But again, we're going to continue uh, this fight as we switch to the outside. Last moment there, catch him uh, unaware, as he's very late on the brakes, and he needs to watch out and make sure he doesn't run into the back of his teammates. Uh, who is up ahead and uh, we eventually make the move on the lacy around the outside and uh, we finally uh, make that overtake stick and we're up into 18th position. Next up is Artem Markolov, the Russian driver uh, in the uh, HWA race lab car as we try and have a little sneak up the inside. We can't quite get there through the long right hander but we're just about pushing him on the exit and now as we switch to the inside we'll see if we can overtake the Russian down towards the hairpin DRS uh, assistance as uh, we head uh, towards the next corner we'll be able to make the move here easily enough and uh, we do so down the inside of Artem Markolov and uh, we will make that move stick on the exit and all of a sudden the audio issues uh, go away so uh, I don't know maybe Markolov was uh, just had a bit too much curry last night I'm not sure but uh, we get ahead of Artem Markolov and uh, now we can shift our focus uh, once again uh, to the cars ahead. Meanwhile, uh, we have a look at a replay and uh, that is a spin for Luca Giotto uh, and that will actually gain a free position. Uh, for us, Luca Giotto uh, was uh, obviously running ahead of us and uh, had a spin uh, down at uh, the uh, first uh, kind of hairpin corner. I don't know the corner numbers around this circuit too well, but uh, Anyway, uh, yeah, Giotto had a spin there and we gained that place uh, on the Italian and now we continue on to uh, try 
and overtake Marcus Armstrong. We get up the inside into the first corner and uh, make that move stick relatively easily. Next up is Gilherme Samaya, the Brazilian, as uh, we uh, continue to make our way through the field. Making good progress here and uh, feeling quite good in the car now. Uh, the mistakes are uh, slowly getting uh, fewer and further between as we get up the inside of Samaya at the last moment there and uh, just about slide through and make that move stick my phone. Uh, alarm is going off, let's ignore that and continue uh, to charge through the field and now uh, trying to make the move on Roy Nassani in a straight line, this will be a relatively easy one and we'll get ahead of the Israeli driver as Sonoda is uh, out at the front uh, setting faster laps, just reminding us uh, that our rivals are at the opposite end of the field still uh, but uh, we look at Artem Markolov and he has a mechanical failure uh, with his car and the Russian retires from the Chinese Grand Prix. Unfortunate for Artem Markolov, uh, but anyway. That damage to our front wing uh, from Roy Nassani re-overtaking us and then cutting us off in the braking zone. Uh, I was a bit busy uh, talking about Markolov at the time, but uh, yeah, we have uh, got damage to our front wing now and we need to box for a new one and uh, we have a safety car out uh, as well uh, for that damage uh, for a bit of carbon fiber on the track and for Artem Markov stopped as well so uh, with a few uh, points around the circuit needing some attention from the marshals uh, the safety car is out and uh, we will uh, all bunch up uh, under the safety car it does mean we can change our front wing without losing quite as much time and we'll rejoin the back of the train but uh, yeah that uh, is not what we needed it's going to send us tumbling back down into last place I think and uh, yeah it's a bit of a disaster there for us uh, we are still ahead of Luca Giotto who had that spin so uh, yeah we aren't quite back to last but uh, all but one uh, as well as Markov out of the race as well so uh, down into 20th position. We get going then on the restart and uh, you can see it wasn't a great one for us. We left a bit of too much of a gap to the cars ahead and uh, now we're struggling for uh, track position uh, once again in this race. So let's see what we can do as uh, we uh, get underway uh, in this feature race once again. Still plenty of time left to make an impact so let's see what we can do. Daniel is in the pits. Daniel in the pits. A and, new uh, strategy is available on the MFT some cars uh, heading into pit lane again because the safety car is out again and I honestly can't tell you uh, what that was for I don't know why the safety car came out again just there um, and that caught me off guard even uh, in commentary right now I don't know why there's a safety car but we do have another okay, safety car has been cleared. Let's get back up to racing speed. and uh, we get going once again uh, so under that safety car, uh, there were a couple of pit stops and we're up into 11th position, so uh, yeah, that has uh, really worked in our favour, but I still don't know why they they had a pit stop, why they had a safety car, rather. So uh, anyway, we continue on, and uh, now uh, we can uh, once again try and carve our way through the field as we go down the inside and make the move on uh, the... Uh, you and I, but you see of Guan Yu Zhou now running much higher in this race. We've got Nikita Mazepin up ahead. We've already overtaken this lot once before, so uh, yeah, we need to do all the work again as we go around the outside of Nikita Mazepin, down the inside into the double left hander, and we'll make the move on the Russian uh, in spectacular ish fashion there. And, uh, yeah, we uh, potentially will run into some tyre concerns by the end of the race because uh, we're on the soft tyres, the, the softer compound, uh, earlier than uh, what was expected by the strategy uh, because we had to box for that front wing. So uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, potentially a little bit tight to get to the end, but we'll see how things go as we sit in the slipstream and we'll try and make a move now on Louis Dallas as we head down towards the heaven once again. Dallas defends, we go to the outside of the Swiss driver and he's super late on the brakes, turns defense into attack as he tries to get up the inside, not quite making any overtakes there on Giuliano Alessi, but uh, very close stuff there for Louis Delatraz. We run into the back of him though, through the final corner and that's more damage for us and a spin for Louis Delatraz. And that is a disaster for us, uh, just as the race uh, was uh, coming good. Uh, we've uh, thrown it away again, taking off our front wing and sending Louis Delatraz 
into a spin. Unfortunate for the Swiss driver in the Charus team and uh, he uh, will be struggling to score anything in this race. Meanwhile, we go back on board uh, in with myself and you can see we've got no downforce. We're really struggling and we're just tumbling down the order uh, almost as fast as Delatraz was and uh, Marino Sato has lost out uh, during the safety cars uh, as well because now he is out of the points. And confirmation there, Sato has another stop to make so uh, we may not be in as bad a position as I thought because uh, if we're all stopping again uh, that's uh, a bit of an extra reset for us. Uh, that could potentially help so into the pits we go for yet another front wing and uh, we'll see uh, what this one can do for us hopefully we can take this front wing to the end of the race without uh, damaging it so into the pits uh, now and uh, let's see uh, what we can uh, do we've got Luca Giotto uh, in pits right in front of us so uh, let's see as we head into the box get another front wing on there's no way we're going to come out in front of Giotto uh, he will not have a front wing change incoming, so uh, he will leave long before us. And uh, we just need to wait and wait for our pits crew. There goes uh, Complete. the Go now. Uh, car ahead. And now finally we get the chance to leave our pit box and uh, can finally get back underway in this race down now in 21st stop. position. No pit stops. Oh, this is going to be a long race. Um, thankfully, there uh, isn't actually too long to go. Uh, we're on that 28 of 32, so we'll never know uh, how many tire issues we would have run, would have run into. But uh, Renasani retires from the race with a mechanical failure, and uh, that's one free position for us. And uh, we catch up uh, to the back of Louis Delatraz, who is uh, going quite slowly through the first few corners. He may have some damage from that spin, okay, and uh, we get ahead of Louis Delatraz trying to give him a bit of space there this time. But meanwhile up ahead, the race winner Mick Schumacher crosses the line to win the feature race in China. And uh, we will come across in a very lowly okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. Uh, 20th position I think. Well it doesn't matter, we're down at the back. It's <laughs> Louis Delatraz gets the driver of the day. That's an interesting one. That's it for another race and a fantastic win for Shuru's. Davide, what do you think made the difference here? Wow, well, there's no doubt that the race was impacted as soon as the safety car made an appearance. It was so important how the successful team today react to this situation. They were decisive and stuck to their strategy, which really helped them take an advantage. Looks like they're on their way out onto the podium now, and what a result this is, and a popular one with the crowd as well. Great stuff to see the Charus team on top here today. Okay, what? Uh, well, uh, Louis Delatraz wins the feature race here in China. It'll be Mick Schumacher in second position with Yuki Tsunoda in third. So, driver of the day then, Davide Valsecchi, who do you think you'd go for? Let's give it to Luis Del Tras. That was a commanding performance today. Very impressive indeed. After all this drama, you'll be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. Okay, so what on earth happened there? Louis Delatraz won by a lap that you may have seen on the previous screen. I don't know what on earth happened. Uh, the race did go a lap short after all those safety cars. So that may have had uh, something to do with it because Louis Delatraz was the only car to finish behind me. So I think what happened is the sort of time certain finish didn't trigger for Louis Delatraz uh, because he was behind me. Uh, and he continued on and finished the final lap, uh, which no one else uh, started due to the time certain finish. So, yeah, that's a, <laughs> a very weird sort of scenario there. Uh, Louis Delatraz uh, having uh, a pretty awful race, especially since we took him out. And then uh, he goes on to win the thing by just doing an extra lap uh, because, uh, I don't know, he's an absolute legend and he can just do that. I don't know, but, uh, well, fair play. Louis Delatraz, race winner here. A huge bank of points for him, and uh, a huge spin for us. 
yeah, it uh, was a bit of a tough one. We certainly had plenty of chances to recover, uh, but yeah, the uh, the contact uh, with Dallas Raz uh, was uh, probably the worst one. We probably didn't really need to be pushing so hard at that point because we'd already recovered to a good position that we would have been uh, in a good place for the reverse grid one, uh, race. But uh, yeah, just unfortunate uh, that uh, we made that mistake and uh, had to come in for a new front wing uh, once again. There's the spin for Luca Giotto, uh, the Italian uh, pirouetting uh, down at uh, that hairpin. But, uh, yeah. Just a disaster, really, for us uh, in this one. And, uh, wow, that is... Uh, an interesting frame rate uh, just there uh, again it's just the recording I don't know why this uh, these issues keep happening uh, I didn't have these issues with the Xbox one but uh, ever since I got the Xbox one X it's uh, just uh, been a continuing theme for some reason the, uh, the, the Xbox with the better hardware really really struggling to record um, but anyway uh, that's fine Let's get into the sprint race and hope we can do a bit better in that one. We've reversed the top eight from yesterday's race to set the grid for the sprint race here today. And the drivers are almost ready on the grid down below. I'm Alex Jakes and alongside me in the dry confines of the commentary box, former 2012 GP2 champion Davide Valsecchi. Tire choice is important no matter what the conditions are, Davide, but do you see it having more significance today? Oh, you know it will, Alex. Remember that in Formula 2 there are not intermediate tires, so deciding when to switch to the wet compound can have a massive impact on the race and your strategy. Nothing tests driver skill like the wet. I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. I will not let you down. It is going to be raining uh, until about the 15 minute mark. Uh, and then uh, it should dry up sometime uh, just after that. So uh, it won't be raining for too long, but uh, we'll need to be very cautious off the uh, start here to make sure we can get through the uh, first few corners cleanly. Five red lights. And away we go for the sprint race here in China. And immediately it's just an opaque wall of spray as we charge down to the first corner for the first time. And we're just going to try and find some space on the outside. But I cannot even see the, the edge of the circuit barely there as we are running wide uh, through turn number one. And uh, we're just going to slot in behind and uh, just sit uh, in last position now as uh, we head through. Uh, we're, we're already near the back, so we just thought we'll sit at the back, make sure we stay out of trouble. And uh, once some of the standing water is cleared and the visibility improves a little bit as the field spreads out, so that is when we will make our charge. But for now, uh, in these conditions, uh, I have no confidence and uh, no ability to uh, see uh, what is coming up. So just taking things very, very cautiously here and uh, yeah, taking the uh, reverse uh, approach to uh, this race uh, to what we tried in the first one we were very aggressive and it uh, cost us and made a, we made a few mistakes so here I just want to stay out of trouble and uh, make sure we are in the fight uh, when it is most important towards the end of the race I just want to survive this period in the rain and uh, make sure uh, that we are uh, still in the race uh, when the time comes to put the dry tyres on so as we uh, continue on, this is at the end of the first lap. Dan Tickton comes into the pit lane. He damaged his front wing in the opening phases of the race. And uh, that is Mick Schumacher, the race winner, or should have been the race winner uh, before the uh, Delatraz glitch. But Schumacher is out of the race. And uh, one of the title contenders are losing big points here in China uh, in the sprint race as uh, we... Uh, to slow down for the virtual safety car uh, that was brought out for Mick Schumacher and uh, that is a, uh, uh, a glorious sight for us as we have to drive for a little bit less time uh, in these conditions uh, with the virtual safety car now out uh, we will not be losing any time uh, with that but anyway we get going once again and uh, it is 
uh, of course, all as it was. And now we need to uh, try and make a charge in this race. We are finding some pace slowly and finding some confidence. And now that the field has spread out, we are uh, finding uh, a little bit of an opportunity here as we have a look to the inside and we'll get past Artem Markolov down into the first corner and find our way up into 20th position and uh, we will slowly uh, be on 19th position rather uh, I forgot about Dan Tickton's pit stop but uh, yes ahead of now Markolov Tickton uh, and of course Schumacher who is out of the race up into 19th for us and uh, we shift our attention to Christian Lungard the Dane uh, not running in a very uh, lofty position in this race and uh, we'll be uh, trying to find uh, our way up into 18th very shortly as we head uh, through the long right hander and trying again to stay just a little bit higher than Christian Lundgaard trying to get a better exit now we have some audio issues again as we head to the inside of Christian Lundgaard and we should be able to make this move relatively easily uh, down towards the hairpin. We'll be really able to go later on the brakes on the inside line. And uh, there we go, ahead of Christian Lungard. And uh, now we can uh, try and chase down Roy Nassani, uh, who is already right in front of us. So we continue on, and we don't quite have a run on Nassani here, but he might be able to try something down into the hairpin later on the brakes. And the Israeli driver, he tries to defend. Uh, but no hope there, we get down the inside and make the move on Roy Nassani. Referring to try and get all the turning done there and then just try and power out the corner uh, as straight as possible. But uh, it soon comes time to uh, make a pit stop and we will get uh, the dry compound tyres on. You can see there uh, the mediums going on to the car and uh, they will take us to the end of the race. So uh, we've made some decent ground, made a few places in the opening phases of this race and uh, now uh, that is time to run on dry compound. I think this will be a much better phase of the race for us. Again, apologies for the audio. Not a clue what Jeff's trying to say there. But uh, anyway, we continue on and uh, we will overtake Robert Schwartzman in a straight line and uh, we will get that move done. And uh, again, uh, the audio issues uh, go away once we overtake uh, a Russian driver. So uh, I don't know, Schwartzman and Markolov, they must have been. Uh, having some kind of party last night but uh, anyway we continue on and uh, we have a nice little look down the inside and that's a sneaky little move but we get it done and we get ahead of Luca Giotto and uh, now we uh, try to uh, shift our focus forwards once again to Guilherme Samaya who's having a brilliant race here running in a very high position we get uh, past the Brazilian in a straight line and uh, that's a relatively easy one but that is Callum Eilot now out of the race and uh, that's another position uh, I believe uh, for us I'm not sure where he is running I haven't seen him all race but uh, anyway that's Eilot out and uh, now uh, we look at uh, one of the Sharus cars going for a spin holding up the field there but he backs out of the way and uh, the rest uh, can go through so uh, more mistakes down in that corner as Kyoto in the last one as we send one down the inside and make the move on Marino Sato. And uh, that was a nice one. And we get up into sixth position. So we are really gaining ground in this race. And we're going to bring in a decent haul of points uh, at this rate. We now go down the outside and we'll be able to make the move here as we go wheel to wheel. But we will get ahead and make the move on Giuliano Alessi. And uh, now we focus on Nobuharu Matsushita uh, actually Noah Lacey trying to come back at us down the inside we'll see if we can hang it around the outside of turn one and we're still there still trying to hold our ground around the outside we'll have the inside line for the left hander and we'll try and sneak through but up on the curve there's no traction there and Lacey is able to get through around the outside so the Frenchman doing a good job there and uh, maintaining that position uh, and uh, he did it very well but We'll try and make the same move we did here down the inside, but not quite getting there. Tapped at the front wing and front wheel there. Thankfully, no damage. But, uh, yeah, we just tapped the uh, back of the lacy. And uh, now rain uh, inbound once again. But I don't think that'll hit before the end of the race. So I don't think we'll need to worry about it. But uh, that is Yuki Tsunoda now out of the race. So Mick Schumacher and Yuki Tsunoda, two of the podium finishers from the last one, out here as we get down the inside of Alessi and make the move on him. 
uh, finally and uh, that should be us booked in and uh, taken that to position now up into the top five so uh, Sonoda must have already been behind us uh, in this one uh, as we continue the fight with Lacey so uh, with this fight with Giuliano is really not coming to an end anytime soon the HWA race lab driver not giving in and uh, we continue to fight we get a good exit here out of the long right hander onto the very long back straight we're going to have the assistance uh, of the DRS and we'll be able to charge past Giuliano Alessi once again and uh, we get ahead of him finally I think we should have that position now but uh, it's been a uh, a long old scrap with a lacy and a bad exit there. You never know, he might come back at us once again. We'll try and hold our ground though. But uh, here, up ahead, is your race winner, Marcus Armstrong, as he comes around the final corner and he crosses the line to win the sprint race in China. Great drive from Marcus Armstrong. And uh, for us, uh, we couldn't catch a Matsushita. It's going to be P5. That, the end, that, that ended very suddenly, didn't it? <laughs> There we have it though, driver of the day, last place at uh, the start, up to fifth, not a bad day. Victory for ART then, after a quality performance. And I have to wonder Davide Valsecchi, just what set them apart from the competition here? I think they kept a cool head, that's why they won today, smooth, steady, everything bad that happened to them, they handled it, calmly and professionally. That's what let them focus on getting the best out of everything else. The car, the strategy, they managed to keep out of trouble the whole way around. An amazing race today and a very well deserved one too. The team worked very hard to get exactly the right setup out of the F2 car. It works for them and the results speak for themselves. ARTGP winners today. So Marcus Armstrong wins the sprint race here in China. Second place will go to Jane Derivola with Pedro Piquet in third. So driver of the day then, Davide Valsecchi, who do you think you'd go for? I have to give it to Sean Galeol. Consistency, good battles, accessible driving, he can be pleased with that performance today. It was great having you with us for this weekend. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you when Formula 2 returns. So because I didn't show the championship standings, I'll just give you an update verbally uh, after that race. Yuki Tsunoda currently leads the standings. Uh, Jane Derubula in second position at 11 points adrift uh, of the Japanese driver. We sit behind the Indian in third, uh, 16 points off uh, Tsunoda's tally. So uh, it's all very close to the front. Mick Schumacher uh, sits in fourth uh, on uh, 18 points uh, behind Tsunoda uh, and uh, the uh, race winner uh, from earlier on Louis Dallatraz uh, scoring a whole bunch of points uh, and uh, I think the only points he scored this season because he currently sits on a total of 25 uh, and currently uh, 25 off the lead so Yuki Tsunoda uh, sitting on 50 points at the moment after two rounds so uh, decent stuff uh, from him and he's made a great start to the season as has the entire Carlin team with Daruvula in second position but uh, anyway uh, now we uh, need to turn our attention uh, to uh, the rest of the season we've done two rounds there's still 10 to go there's still a lot left uh, to play out Marino Sato has been a bit of a surprise as well in uh, this uh, early portion of the season doing quite well uh, for the Dryden team he currently sits seventh in the standings uh, as well uh, he um, didn't really have luck on his side uh, in this round but he was very quick uh, nonetheless uh, and qualified up in fourth position so uh, his qualifying uh, has been very very good uh, for Marino Sato uh, other surprises though Robert Schwartzman not doing so well he's down in ninth in the standings uh, and uh, yeah there's a few uh, other uh, ones that stand out Dan Tickton down in 10th position Callum Isla in 11th I would have expected uh, the likes of them to be uh, much higher up, Nobuharu Matsushita, who have had so many battles with in Formula 2 seasons gone by, uh, is down in 14th position, so uh, maybe uh, we will take the fight to a different Japanese driver uh, in this season uh, in the form of Yuki Tsunoda. But uh, yes, that has been the second round of the championship, so uh, let me know what you thought of uh, all the action here in China, and uh, 
let me know if you have any feedback, any tips, uh, or anything else that you would uh, like to see, and uh, I'll see uh, what I can do. But uh, anyway, other than that, uh, there is not a lot left to cover, so I will say thank you so much for watching all the way to the end, and I will see you next time uh, for the next round of Formula 2. Goodbye.